You're watching Tim Topham TV. This is episode number 46. Hi everyone and thanks for watching this episode of Tim Topham TV, the piano teaching podcast where we're going to be interviewing Eleanor Cobb from the UK. Now Eleanor, if you haven't come across her before, is a fantastic uh, composer, teacher and now publisher and she's got some amazing resources that we can all take great advantage of and so I wanted to get her on the episode to talk about teaching creatively, to talk a little bit about improvising and about jazz because she has books and methods on all these different aspects of piano teaching. So I think you're going to enjoy this interview uh, and finding out a little bit more about what she does with her music publishing. Now today's episode you can find the show notes at timtopham.com slash episode 46 and as always, it would be fantastic if you have time to leave a review on iTunes. I would very much appreciate it. If you've been watching or listening wherever you are uh, and whatever you're doing, if you're getting something out of these and can spare five minutes maximum to leave a review, I'd really appreciate it. The instructions are really straightforward and I've uh, made it very clear for you at timtopham.com slash iTunes. Now in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the kind of creative things that classically trained teachers can do. Eleanor herself is a classically trained musician who's now able to help her students um, with jazz and creativity at the piano and create books on it and even uh, run masterclasses and workshops around the world on it. Um, and she's even training other people up in it. So we're going to talk a little bit about the um, jazz syllabus of the ABRSM and how um, that can be used by teachers for, um, for students who are interested in learning more about jazz. We're going to talk about specifically what jazz is and what kind of music that um, entails because uh, as Eleanor explained, sometimes students don't actually really know what jazz is. So we go into a little bit more detail about that and we go into some... Um, important kind of ideas that you can use in your studio to get students improvising. So here's my interview with Eleanor Cobb. Show notes again at timtopham.com forward slash episode 46. Well, Eleanor Cobb, fantastic to finally get you on the podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank you so very much and I'm delighted to meet you finally. It's been it's been quite a long time. You have been so so busy with exciting, very exciting projects and things. So I thought it would be great if you could just tell everyone to start with just what kind of things you do day to day at the moment. Are you still teaching, or is it mainly composing, or are you just working on your publishing business? Um, just recently, I I literally focusing on publishing and composing, and it's it's really full on at the moment. Which is a good thing, right? That's uh, that's good for business. Yes, it is very good. Good because I I tend to get up early, have my breakfast, um, and then the work starts. And I, I go on till probably sometimes one o'clock in, in in the UK, one thirty in the morning. Uh, because oh, wow. okay. yeah. I couldn't stop the conversation if somebody wants to chat to me then I, I, or have um, a question about some downloads or anything like technical or just a simple inquiry or just a friendly chat. Obviously, you know, I'll be very, very keen and topping away. And yeah, so it, it does keep me busy. I try to get to the gym if, I, if I'm lucky. It doesn't happen very often recently, but that's just, you know, routine is no holidays, no weekends. It's just, you know... Straightforward work, but I'm loving it. Great. And so you, you started um, as, as a piano teacher, as all of us are, I, th I think I'm right in saying, and you started producing your own um, books and method books and, and compositions and things like that. And that just has grown and grown and grown to the point now where you're also publishing other people's work. So have I got that right? It is correct, but I tend to think about all of the books I publish, they're more um, resources, they're supplement resources to the lessons, because I wouldn't say that um, Higgledy Piggledy is a method, it's a supplement book, um, and Piano Trip to London is more of a um, good tune to play along any methods. I know, for example, I did research um, and um, people commented that um, they are very happy to use that book with John Thompson's books, for example. Right. So one of the things that I really love about your 
the a lot of the books that you've got um higgledy piggledy jazz is, is one of the, the key ones is that it's about helping classically trained musicians and teachers be able to teach improvising and this is something that you know that i'm very passionate about and i love helping teachers yeah. understand how to just do a 12 bar blues you know it's, it's quite straightforward if, if you if you get over that kind of hump of i don't really know what i'm doing so why do you feel that it's important for teachers to add creativity and improvising to their lessons well to be honest when i grew up um even um food release was considered very sort of too popular so it was a very strict environment so and obviously that restriction kind of you know when i started to, to teach here in the uk it was completely you know the tables turned because the children and the parents were kind of um, not dictating but you know saying you know we want to play this we don't want to play that and i very quickly realized that it's more of a customer driven situation when um they determine the tone of the whole lesson. And this is when I first time heard uh, people, when people would um, refer to a music lesson as having fun. When I grew up, it wasn't fun. It meant to be hard work. Yeah. So, and I thought, hmm, that's great because it was very refreshing because, you know, I finally could decide on um, a repertoire which was not necessarily very prescriptive. Uh, but um, it had to be pedagogically sound and pianistically re uh, really well written. So, and the exams, obviously, in the in the UK, you know, we're very much driven um, to do the exams. You know, um, Associated Board of Royal Schools of Music or uh, Trinity or other examination boards. But there is always um, a, a tune. <laughs> Um, which is jazzy and you know whenever I would play uh, to my students you know which piece do you want and as soon as we arrived to list C there was no question there was no brain it was always the jazzy one so that kind of led me to believe that you know children wanted to play something um, in that sort of you know um, genre but um, also it didn't include any improvisation at that time it's not until i've discovered the, the jazz syllabus when it was just basically introduced for the first time i saw the the sections for the improvisation and and this is kind of was um an eye-opener for me because uh, classically trained we are teach to uh, we are taught to play exactly what it says in the score and we are supposed to be very diligent very faithful to what composers wishes were and that's how we were assessed um, primarily on how true to the uh, composers um, uh, pieces um, you know we were performing where jazz was completely different this is where com you know completely different thing you know for the first time pianists Pianist, you know, could decide which note to play and when. So shock that's horror. when it's, it's <laughs> shocking horror. Yes, and this is, you know, suddenly, you know, the floods open, freedom, and as you can imagine, you know, it's a common common knowledge. You know, when you give freedom to somebody who never had the freedom, they just kids just didn't know what to do with it. Um, mm. At the first sort of moment, you know, I, I felt like, okay, how are we going to approach that? And of course, that sections of improvisations always suggested notes. Um, which could be used, and and obviously, you know, um, that helped a lot. I mean, everything else comes to to it, you know, the, the the blue scale and pentatonics and everything else. But at that moment, you know, my job was to introduce a, a different way of thinking to my students. And of course, Higgledy Piggledy came, you know, much much later because I just, you know, the, the tune started to play in my head because. Um, I was never encouraged to compose. I didn't know I could compose. And suddenly, you know, the tunes started flooding. And I remember my sister and I, we were in Japan. We had a um, um, sort of concert there as a duet. And we were living in this um, a little country cottage in, in Japanese countryside. We were left alone to sort of recover from the long flight. And they had a piano there. And I remember I woke up and I went to the piano, which was covered in that heavy velvet thing we removed it and there was this you know shiny yamaha and i went sort of to that piano and i suddenly started to play what what became um um i ate all the chocolate da, 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 da. and it just you know 
I don't know. We just is happened. that one of the Higgledy Piggledy jazz tunes? Yeah, it, it is. And then, of course, uh, I I, um, I wrote um, Polka Butterfly, which is completely not jazz piece. I mean, it's it's really you know one of those folk polkas, you know, folk butterfly, you know, um, in very much in, in European tradition. But a lot of bands play music like that, and they they take it away and they you know improvise. So, and then you know it, it kind of evolved from there and I started to write it down and, and, and on a piece of paper and then I, I discovered Sibelius um, and starting to put notes into Sibelius and then of course I had great support from the music department and I, I think I guess I guess I was very very lucky and I was encouraged to to introduce jazz in a completely different way to students but I have to stress that I'm not a jazzer and I, I don't think some people, you know, think, well, is she a jazz, is she classically trained? I am a classically trained, um, mm -hmm. um, and that's what I am. But I understand that uh, te uh, teachers today need to give pu pupils, uh, students, uh, what they really want to do. And not everybody wants to do it, but a large majority of students, they think they want to play jazz, but um, I have a great many discussions with my jazzy friends, real jazzers, and very often it is just misunderstanding, you know, pe what people think is jazz is it's really a jolly tune. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and I'll tell you a very funny story. I remember when I, I just um, had a student and his mom and they were just like, oh, my God, we want to play jazz and he's so good. And I was like, uh, do you really know what jazz is? And um, I started to play a few, few you know, standards, and I said, no, no, I don't like that, and I, would, I ran out of <laughs> options, and I said, okay, hang on a minute, and I know he played an uh, entertainer, he, somebody, you know, taught him before me, and I, I just, I went and I played the march from, from opera Aida by Verdi, you know, da, 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 dum, 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 da, 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 and the boy said, that's exactly what I want to play. <laughs> and for me, it was like, okay, you have no idea. And it was very, very funny. And I still um, tell this story. So that's what I'm trying to say. You know, the first thing we need to establish, whether they, the child and the parents, they really understand what, what they want to play. And then some are very content with, with playing um, happy, jolly tunes. But those who want to be taught properly, obviously they need to start um, with basics, just basics of playing piano, because I don't think you can start with teaching improvisation um, to somebody who, who has no knowledge um, of, of how to play the piano, because, I mean, you know, according to the Guinness Book, Book of Records, the piano is the hardest instrument to learn to play. Oh, and no, I have a is, that, is that a fact? Uh, it is a fact. Um, okay. I've heard about it when I was driving in my car and I was listening to a BBC radio show um, and somebody, you know, they had this um, call-in time when, when somebody can call in with, with a question and there was this um, girl in the studio, she needed to come up with the answer within so long and she came up with that and she said, yes, the piano is the hardest instrument to learn to play. But I have a question for you. Do you know which instrument is the hardest to play? So, sorry, sorry, piano is the hardest to learn. You're saying learn. which is the hardest to play? Yeah. Violin. No, I saw that. I saw that. French horn. Oh, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah that, is, so, that is a struggle, so yeah. You can, people, people that often think, you know, you, you know, I want to play the piano, it will be very good just because I want to play the piano. But this is the most important thing. If you want to play it, you will have that enthusiasm and um, will be able to overcome all the difficulties of the tediousness, you know, of the process in which sometimes you go through the motions. So this is where jazz comes in. To me, it was like a carrot. Mm -hmm. To people, it was a carrot to get my students to play and learn to play and have fun and progress. But that was a glue which would glue them to playing also the exam pieces because that's what pa parents want us, uh, wanted us to do. And this is, you know, I'm just carrying on. You stop me. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> it's, like it's, favorite really, <laughs> it's really good to hear because I approach uh, jazz, using jazz and pop music in particular in exactly the same way. It, and I've, I've never sort of advocated a diet of only pop or only jazz. It's part of... A holistic approach to, to lessons and yeah. as you say in many ways it is the carrot or the glue that keeps the kids playing and learning as they go 
whatever happens down the future, we're not really sure. They might end up jazz musicians. They might end up classical musicians. But by doing this, we're going to keep them learning. That's so very true. But the most um, interesting fact, uh, I, I always, you know, the opinions are very sort of today is that, opinion is that um, only jazz specialists can teach jazz. And I completely agree with that. But I, I, here is the thing. Jazz was created by people who were not trained. Neither yeah, that's right. Yeah. They yeah, didn't know how to read a single note. They knew four, uh, three chords, you know, what mm. we call tonic subdominant and dominant and they just created this fascinating stuff without uh, reading a single note or without understanding the progressions and cadences and and deviations and modulations we know that so i think you know the process came what was um you know naturally evolving when it was cl classified and and became what we know today it, it became a very complex art, form of art. And yes, I agree, it needs to be taught by a specialist. But what I do, what I did, um, I, I, I created, I composed a book and I didn't sit down and think, oh, I'm going to create this book because I'm so very clever. I just created this book because I thought my, my students would love it. And then sections of improvisation uh, were added later after I took advice from Bradley, Sowash and Leila Biss. Of course, you know them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're yes. good friends. And I remember that Bradley said, what kind of jazz it is if there is no section for improvisation? I thought, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I added oh. that. So I thought that was very important. And I completely agree with him because um, jazz is something which requires that freedom when you walk away from the score and you take charge. And that's mm -hmm. the hardest bit, of course. Mm -hmm. now, you mentioned earlier, you I just want to go back. back. Um, yeah. Um, uh, jazz, uh, jazz that may be RSM? Yes, um, we have five grades created for the piano, and, and they um, it's 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 it works when it works, but in in some cases it doesn't work because it's as I said, you know, everyone is different, and I think they created it very much with the same approach like they did for the classical piano. They also have so many pieces, so many scales, so many this and so many that. Um, and I must say, I had most distinctions in my career when I taught that. Just, mm. It was so much fun. I remember when, they, when, when, when boys and girls got it. Oh my God, the piano sounded so good because um, I think they felt very, very good about themselves because they were doing something. I mean, we're talking, uh, we're talking 98 99 so it's been like a long time ago but and obviously mm. now um jazz pieces and jazz syllabus has been around for such a long time and um children i mean those children are already like you know goodness me they must be 30 now yeah so it's 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 a good thing i would recommend if, if somebody wants to try to try i think it's a very good method to sort mm. of to to, um, yeah, because it also um, allows one to take an exam and have a certificate at the end. Even, even though they're looking at a jazz, I think it's the only jazz syllabus, examined syllabus in the world. We, we have a very strong exam culture over here, as you're probably yeah. aware. Um, and I've, I've explored that jazz syllabus, and I think it's there's got a lot of merit to it. Um, and it's mm -hmm. quite structured, which for a classical trained teacher, it would be quite good because it you know is yeah. quite quite ordered. So I think we need to just clarify before we go on because I want, want to get some tips from you about this approach to jazz for, for the teachers okay. listening. What is jazz? We've, we've talked about what it isn't. It's not the poker or something from Verdi's opera. What, in your opinion, what is it? Can you define it simply? Uh, jazz, it's, it's a freedom of expression because... Um, Again, you know, to be, it's, it's an ability not to play what it says because um, it's a free will. Because when we play classical music, we follow the will of the composer. With jazz, it's our own will. If mm. you play alone, you just get on with it. If you play <laughs> with, with, with others, you obviously have to agree, you know, you'll, you'll do that much on that and then everybody uh, you know has a a section when they improvise and you agree on which order or a leader nods to whoever if you've been in a situation you you know what i mean you say okay mm -hmm. 
play this three times and then we go, you go, you go, you go, and that is fine. But it takes a professional um, who understand that environment and most importantly, one needs to count the bars, the, the, the times around and to stay in control where classically we have everything written so we don't have to do that. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's how it's different to me. That's what jazz is to me. Yeah, it's great. Uh, okay, so let's let's give teachers some tips here. Um, we've okay. obviously we'll talk about some of your resources because they're fabulous, and it would be great mm -hmm. to do that. But have, are there some things that teachers can do when if if they have a student that says they want to learn jazz and it is actually jazz, it's not something from the opera. What? How do they approach it? Where could they start? Well, the most important thing is, as you said, the the two, two people in the room need to want to do it. Because if 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 you force it, it's not going to work. Because that becomes, you know, as I said, oh, should I? Must I? Um, mm. It has to have this element of again a free will. Once that that once this is achieved, I think the best thing to do. That's how I started to create my um, exercises. Because uh, for me to explain how the sections for for improvisations work, I needed to explain to my pupils. So. As, as you know, the most in intriguing part of, of teaching to play the piano is not actual notes, it's the rhythm. Because the rhythm and, and the mm. timing, that holds all, all together. So mm. the first thing I would say for teachers, decide on how many bars you're going to do, and then make sure to count those bars with the pupil. For example, you go one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So that length of time, that would be, you know, the structure. Then you say, okay, we're going to play four chords. Sorry, we're going to play chord C during these four bars. So the pupil will have understanding that actually in jazz, you don't have to change every single note. Because if you look at the classical, um, uh, you know, repertoire, uh, you know, everything, it just changes Everybody, all the time. Yeah. Where That's in why it's jazz, such a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So if you look at a 12 bar blues, the left hand just carries on for four bars on chord C, or whether it's walking bass, whether you play something else, where you play boogie mm. boogie, it will stay on C. So that's most important, just to lay that foundation and try to, to explain to people that actually you don't have to change, you just have to stay on this, on this pattern, whatever you call it. And, and then go to next chord, get the F for two bars, then go back to C. So you, you lay the foundation of that formula, I call it, you know, progression of 12 bars. Once that mm -hmm. is established, then you have to choose, okay, which notes you're going to be improvising on. So in my tunes, it's, it's a blues scale because I, I just mm -hmm. felt that, okay, you want to sound blues, you need blues notes. Because if you want to sound in major, you use major. If you want to sound in minor, you use a minor. So, I explain to children, or I explain to adults, or I exp a teacher would need to explain which are those notes on the piano. Mm. And you don't need a book for that. You absolutely don't need a book. You look down, and, and, and this is the note you need. This is your C, that's your E flat, that's your F. But the best thing to do, I've learned from a great friend of mine, Sophie Freeman, and um, she's a great jazzer. You need great many notes. All you need to do is understanding what you're going to do with one note first. So if you just have one note, sort out your left hand, all these chords. Just doom, doom. Mm -hmm. Keeping doom, a steady beat, yep. Doom, doom. And then the right hand, before you start playing, develop that rhythm. What you're going to be doing? Da, 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 da. And you go. Just see, see where the left hand goes. See, see, and it's no point explaining how does it rhythmically coincide. You can do tap it on it on the table. That is very helpful just to sort it out. So, but once you establish it with one note, just add another note. Go to C flat. So instead of going C, C, go C E flat, C flat, da 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 da, yeah. and change left yeah. to go to F. And, and this is the most important thing when children and, and, and teachers would know that even you change the left hand, right hand can stay the same. That's the beauty of it because they will work together. These two notes, they will mm. be chord and enough. You know that, but for classically trained, that's very difficult to understand. I mean, they shouldn't work, but they do. 
Yeah, that's right. And it's, 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 a, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a really similar approach to uh, Christopher Norton as well. I had him on my podcast episode way back in episode two. He was talking about improvising and he has that same approach as you're probably aware. Oh, really? just, just start, well, just start, start with one note. Just start with one note. Start with one note. Keep it simple. Exactly. Mm. And, and, and that's it. That add another note, but change the rhythm. And, and then before you know it, the most important thing is some say, oh, no, you play the wrong note when you play classical. In jazz, there is no wrong note. No, as soon as you played a different note, it's already become improvisation. So exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my God, you just improvised, and and this is fantastic moment because the the, 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 the the you know the little guys you know eyes just lit up and say oh oh my God, and it just takes us you know that sort of once you sorted out these first steps. And that gives that you know impact and enthusiasm because. I, I don't believe in overcomplicating things or and and going into sophisticated leaks and all sorts of things. Um, I'm talking classically trained beginners, which is mm. somebody who just had maybe a year training on the piano, um, who sort of late elementary elementary level, mm -hmm. who as teacher need to go down to that level, and that's what I did with my with the Higgledy Piggledy Jazz and improv exercises. Mm. Just take it down to that level, what that little person knows, and work with that. Or, of course, if you have somebody older, you can be a little bit more sort of, but uh, sort of, you know, more, um, I don't know, adventurous. But this basic steps, what I suggested, yeah? Um, mm, sort yeah. of left like hand, 12 bars, work this out, start with one note and, and work your way up. And of course, then you start moving to, you know, up and down the blue scale. Yeah. But even if you have a fantastic improvisation for, for that sort of, you know, it, it can be done in one lesson. And I remember when I, when I started to introduce these things, um, you know, to my students, we, we would literally do five minutes because we needed to do so much more. And I remember that in lessons, mm -hmm. Um, you I, know. I have the same thing. It, it can just be a part of a lesson. That's you know. Yeah, it just, yeah. It connects the student with the piano and with their ears and gets their mind focused. It's a great way yeah. to begin. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. It has to be that element. You know. Okay, let's do this. Just you know. But I never used it to relax because mm. I, I think first of all, lessons too short. As soon as you say relax, they kind of go oh, relax. Yeah. But it was like, okay, let's try do, let's try this. You know, let's just change the hat. You know, let's put the jazz hat and let's just try to do that. So yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's a fantastic way. And I remember you said, you know, why do I think it is important? Um, I, I, I'm talking again, a uh, beginner's level. I'm talking, you know, children who just started to play or adults who just started to play the piano. Um, you know, classically tra trained teachers are, we teach also all so many different genres. We, we are confident in, in talking about Baroque, we're confident about talking Expressionism and Impressionism and Romantic and Classical. We understand the Mordens, we understand uh, diminished uh, septic chords, we, we are fluent in all these things. And suddenly we kind of pale in, how do you say it, in insignificance? I'm sorry, not English, so I'm sometimes, you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? And we kind of feel that, oh my God, I shouldn't be doing this because they say, us, uh, they to, say to us that we cannot do this. But in fact, we have all the tools, all we need to do, and I, I mean, you know, I've done workshops and I talk to a great many, um, you know, audiences. Um, all we need to do, we just need to look at it in a slightly different way mm. and not yep. to propose, oh, no, I can teach jazz. No, yep. I propose that's, that you can, you can give that first impact. And as you said, we don't know what's going to happen to that little person in your room or, or a big person in your room. They come mm -hmm. and, and they want to be learned, uh, taught to play the piano and we need to be able to give them information. And of course, if somebody is really, really keen and capable, um, you know, in the past, I passed a great, great many students to the jazz specialist teacher. And actually, I, I would be um, initiating the conversation. I would be saying, do you know what? I think it would be a great idea that at this point you would consider that the best thing to do would be to move to the, um, you know, yep. to a teacher yep. who would and, give and you uh, instruction. 
Yeah. 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 I'm not a, I'm I'm not a, a man's chess player. player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, now, in regard to Higgledy Jazz, uh, you've, you've mentioned this. This is one of your, um, your main books. Is this the kind of book that a teacher can, can use to help them with understanding and introducing improvisation? I think so. I definitely would go for it because it has all elements. You can you have a choice there. You can ignore the section for uh, you know a top bar which suggests improvised notes, and you can have what I call notated jazz. You can play exactly what it says. So, okay. uh, or if they feel adventurous, they can certainly use it as introducing to um, to the jazz elements. And it's as I said, you know, there are there is no a long paragraph of uh, or paragraphs of how to do it. It's pretty pretty self-explanatory what can happen, and I think to to do that, it's it's really important to to test the situation whether a student is really that interested. Because as I said, you know, ninety nine percent wants just to play a jolly tune, but that one percent. Who, who won't pursue it, they'll go through the book, they'll play it, or they'll use a great many books. As you mentioned, Christopher Norton, I met him a couple mm -hmm. of times. He's a great guy. We have a picture with him taken together in London, the Music Expo. It was a fun event, um, uh, music, music Awards we have every every year in London. Yeah, I'd and, like to come across for that one year, actually. Uh, so, so, beg your pardon? I'd like to come across for that one year. It looks, it looks fantastic. Because oh. I know um, uh, Sally Cathcart uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, those guys, and also oh, um, uh, oh, remembering names, uh, Mackworth Young, uh, yeah, yeah. Lucinda. Yeah, so like, Lucinda. yes, 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 yeah, I know yeah. And I saw them all, they were there, and I would have loved to have been to some of those sessions. It looks great. Well, I think they put a call out for workshops. Shall I send you a link? Uh, Yes, please. Please do. Yeah, oh, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I finish, I will, I will look it up. <laughs> All right, because thank you. Because the team was organising it. They're a fantastic team. Um, it, you will receive an email. It will be um, signed by John Barrett. Okay. He's, he's the one who sort of, you know, um, runs all the marketing side and, 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 you know, that sort of thing. So you can yeah. write it. Cool. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look out for that. Thank you. Um, oh. All right. So, so I'm going to see um, you next year. Yeah, that's it. No, it would be good to meet you face to face, too. Definitely. Um, so, with um, your the jazz books, Higgledy Piggledy, yeah. um, is there a series or is it just one book and does it work for different levels? How, how do they suit students? Well, basically, there are 10 tunes that go from late elementary to intermediate. Because, as I said, you know, I, I wanted to have a, a book. That's the book. <laughs> yep. Plug. Um, and, and basically, it kind of goes from easier pieces to more complicated. But there is a secret in that book. You know, the pieces which have improvisational sections, they all in C major. And they kind of are improvisation on itself. Mm -hmm. and, and children and teachers who played it, they came to me and said, Helena, you can just play one after another and they, they sound like improvisation. And that's exactly what they are because I wanted to give the material which could be used and applied to different pieces in different keys because I know teachers prescribe those to play in different keys and it's very easily done because they can be transposed without a problem. Um, and it's another, another great, a great way of using the book. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, because the, the book was so popular, um, I was asked to do a book for saxophone. So Sophie Freeman, she was the editor for the sax, um, sax edition. And then there is the book for classical guitar ensemble. Another great friend of mine helped me because I have no idea about the classical guitar. <laughs> He used it so many times, and I know people are, um, are very happy with that book. Um, also, there is a clarinet ensemble book. So it's really all together. It's, this series didn't go like for piano, up, up, up. It, it rather went same pieces for piano, alto saxophone, classical guitar ensemble, uh, mm. clarinet ensemble, and there are two pieces for ukulele as well. So basically, my idea was to give a, a school something they can put together and use all these books 
and include lots of little performers because you know you know the school concerts you know you're like, mm. like 200 kids how do you put them all in the music concert which needs to last like 45 minutes you create an ensemble so also this, you're saying the the book so the person who's on the the piano book can play along to the person on the sax book in the same piece yeah yeah, yeah. all classical ah. ensemble or, that's, or, that's or clarinet yeah. or ukulele and and um, yeah, that's basically it. And and the original book had a CD, which I recorded with my friends. We went to the studio and we had like four or five sessions. When when we basically it's a live recording. So and yeah. it was mastered and it's, it's it's like a proper job. You know, I really really you know decided that it's going to be amazing. And yeah, we spent a long time sorting it out and. I felt, you know, it was another aspect I wanted to give to my students. That little people, um, pianists, we, we, we never have any chances to be in the band because if you play flute or clarinet, before you know it, you can play two notes, off you go to the band, and they all play in the band, they play in the, in a, in a flute choir or ensemble with, with others, or if they play violin, they're immediately in an orchestra. Mm. Pianists. We don't, have, we don't have piano orchestras, do we? <laughs> Unless you have them in Australia, I don't know. So, <laughs> Not common, <yeah>. no. <laughs> so I wanted this, uh, you know, experience. And, uh, and of course, the CD is uh, recorded in a four different ways, which uh, is, a, is a really a practicing tool. It, there is okay, no so I was going to say, are they, are they backing tracks for the jazz tune? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. backing tracks. But I wanted that experience so they can practice, they can break down the entire piece and they practice on the left hand, for example, and they can listen to the, to the track, which has piano as well, and they can just play left hand, only chords on C. But it teaches them to learn to listen because yeah, pianists, so we don't listen, do we? We are solid. No, that's right. No, that's why I really <laughs> love playing along with my students, uh, getting them to play like backing tracks, really important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now you've also got a method. I think uh, I'm correcting calling it the um, piano. My piano trip to London is. Would, would you call that a, a beginner method? Is that right? Um, I will, you know, in the beginning, when people saw that, they said, "Oh, it could work as a method." And I actually wrote it as, as a game, as as tunes. Um, and okay, so it's a book of music. I, it's it's a musical book. It's a game as resource, which is really works really well as um, not as method, but as pieces used occasionally. Okay. Because there are a lot of people, who, little people, who play the piano at this level. So it's their pieces literally can be taught by uh, and prepared for the concert by somebody who had a couple of lessons. That was the idea, and it has duets duet part for teacher That's right. yeah. or it could be played by older student or a parent or a grandparent so it, it's more again a supplement as I said you know I am there are so many methods around it's really yeah. it's 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 not all about competition with me a market and, and, and such it's more of a, I'm, I'm driven by the fact that I want to give kids a book with amazing tunes. The tunes they want to play and they will learn and they feel amazing about themselves. And that basically, you know, that's the, that's what the book is about. Mm. For little people to perform as soon as they can. Yeah, and music that they like. Yeah, that's good. That's what yeah. we want, isn't it? I mean, why, why force kids to play music that you wouldn't even be inspired to play or listen to? I don't yeah. understand. All right. Yeah. Right. So you've got you've now got an online publishing business. So not only are you writing your own music, you're actually publishing other people's music, and you've got some some pretty impressive names in your you. um, your publishing business. So I mean, I'm interested. How did it come about that you uh, went down this publishing line? Uh, to be honest, the, the only sense I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> all, all good things happened for a reason, I think. And I, through, through the years when I only had one book and I, I made a recording, I had experience of, of creating many events and we're talking um, uh, events where up to like 86 children would perform my music and we would have sold out audiences and we would have a presenter from the BBC and, and it was all very high profile for that event and it was very all very well put together because i had such enthusiasm behind the 
uh, everybody involved, parents and, and the school and, and the headmasters, and I'm eternally grateful. But through that, I started to meet people who were real professional musicians who are currently performing and recording and and that kind of uh, you know put me in their line of vision do you know what i mean mm -hmm. because I, if 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 i didn't talk about uh, my higgledy piggledy jazz continuously to all my friends or they would talk to me about it because it was my life um and they probably would mention to them something and they would say oh ellen i just published this book and my first Higgledy Piggledy book was apps. It, I call it my little monster. It looked awful. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Oh, I look at it. I don't think I'm, I'm absolutely clueless. So I, I wasn't going to publishing because I just wanted to see it in print because, you know, I, I just had a go. That's what people say. You have a go. And then, of course, I was um, never taking any comments in a wrong way every comment was made was taken by advice and from that i've learned and i've learned and improved and i continuously do that and and I'm, I'm i'm still kind of you know learning but what i really wanted to do i wanted to produce a very good book and from that i started to meet people who who would say oh can i send you my stuff and of course if i know somebody who is amazing in their job, how could I say no? Mm. So the first guide was Paul Birchall, and of course, Paul, he um, he is uh, an amazing keyboard player. He's he's absolutely terrific. Uh, uh, when he sent me the list of people he performed with, my jaw just dropped. Yeah, and yeah. I was just yeah. like, oh my god, this is absolutely amazing, and this is, this guy is absolute gem. So when he sent you his music, I, I loved it. And he was the first composer. He trusted me with his music, and his daily expressions are are so sincere. And 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 there is nothing about it, you know. Which, you know, sometimes you look at music and you think that's okay. Mm -hmm. It was nothing. It was. It just jumped at me. So that was the first time when I I, I kind of you know um took that you know courage and i said do you want me to publish it he said oh yeah but yes let's do that but because i knew his background and yep. and and he played as i said you know i check who he played with so i don't lie. hang on and i assume he uh, didn't have any luck with other publishers too did he did he shop around I, uh, to be honest, no i don't think so Okay. I don't think so because it was a conversation because he recorded something for me with um, a, a Snake Davis. He's an amazing jazz player, saxophonist, um, and they did um, a recording with their band of four of my pieces, um, and, and they're on such a professional level. I still need to put them out. I mean, they're sitting on my library, um, yeah. and, and because I knew of of the quality of work he produced for me, it was, uh, you know, it was. You know, it was a question, would you like me to publish the yes? And it was just, you know, that's it. So basically, yeah, he, he, hang on. Oh, I'm embarrassed now, I can't remember. Well, basically, he plays with, uh, you know, M, M people? Yeah, I remember the M people the from the 90s. Yeah, yeah, I remember we all were dancing, you know. Yeah, totally. And, yeah, so he, he basically recorded, yeah, he, he, he's touring with them. Uh, and, and um, oh gosh. Jim Diamond. Yeah, well, so it doesn't matter too much yeah, anyway. I'm, yeah, I'm more interested in, in the, yeah, okay, yeah, in how in how it came about. But what what other things? What other you know? If you were to give a quick overview of your catalogue at the moment, okay, what would you um, say people would be finding there that they wouldn't get somewhere else? Okay, first of all, I I am I am focused on publishing original music. I, I'm not too keen on arrangements. I, I think that um, modern composers, living composers, they, they just need to be heard today. They, mm. they, they need to have that opportunity and I'm after that. That's my goal. Um, and I'm on, on, a, on a mission basically to seek out excellent examples of educational music. Um, it has to be clever. It has to be pedagogically and pianistically sound because, um, as I said, you know, as a pianist, I understand what it is all about. So it needs mm -hmm. to fit to the 
um, you know, to the scheme of things, you know, um, and needs to be attractive proposition. So that's what I'm after. I want to have original music by living composers for educational market. Yeah. And you've got, I was very interested to see, you've got a lot of music that looks like it would suit, suit teenagers quite well and adult yes. learners. Yeah, that's another thing because, um, because I mean, you know, after oh, over 20 years, nearly 20 years after teaching, um, I've noticed there was like the trend after grade five, kids would say, oh, I don't want to do exams anymore. I want just to play the piano, which is fair enough because grade yeah. six, seven, and eight are very complicated and you need to practice and they all have a school exam, so they don't want to do it anymore or they don't have time. So yeah. that was immediately that, um, you know, gap. What do you do next? Because they want to explore. And this is where very often um, arrangements are very difficult to play. Because when you listen to something like, oh, I don't know, Memories, have you told one of those? Memories from Cats? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or the Titanic. I mean, they all sound fabulous. But once you put them in, into sort of in front of a student, it doesn't sound so fabulous anymore. So right. they're, Yeah, they're very different. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, as I say, reduction. And I'm not mm. so keen on reductions for that particular reason, unless you're playing it with the band. It kind of loses the whole attractiveness of it. So I'm kind of interested in, in having a, a music which is popular in style, and whether it's a disco, and I actually have example of house music, if you mm. believe it. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. No, I saw it. I listened to it. Oh, it's, it's yes. amazing, yeah. It's so, cool. uh, for example, Sam Wedgwood, he's writing a fantastic uh, pop music pop style music um, and, mm -hmm. and disco as well. Um, and Heather Hammond, um, she's a big name, of course. Uh, she writes. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, must say, I don't know her name, but that's, you know, we're all in uh, different name. areas, aren't we? Yeah, she's quite a big name in the UK. Um, okay. I'm very, very proud to represent her. Um, and, and, and the music they write, it just fits to what teenagers want because it's not too complicated. It's not too growing up. It's cool. It's hip. They, they, they just love it. And they sound good. And they enjoy playing it, which is important. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, look, I think um, I'm, I'm keen to wrap it up because uh, we're coming up to our hour anyway. Um, yeah. Where, where should people go to find out more about you and find, have a listen to some of this cool music that you've got? Well, obviously, my website, it's elnacob.com. So can I just, you know, say that about well, the quality of books? Um, I think, you know, the books, they all produce to the very, very good standard. And, and I mean, people, people are a, a bit skeptical of, of purchasing online. But I think, you know, I, I try to <laughs> write a very tight shop and, and send the books near enough if it's before certain time of the day they will go to the post but all the books are very well produced they they have very good engravings and it's worthwhile to buy a book um i also have a facebook group and mm -hmm. you just well um are listening and they're very very welcome to join this elena cobb uh publishing um discussion group on facebook uh, where i regularly promote um, on mondays for example i always have giveaway competition so okay. it's either of the catalog i have or uh, somebody who is a guest presenter and, and teachers can win something, some new material. Or on Fridays, I have freebies when people can try stuff out. You know, so I'm very keen to, to be um, uh, very uh, sort of welcoming to talk about my music and try it out on the website. I have audio samples um, and previews. So I, I do try to make it as, as sort of um, easy to see yep, because yep. it's it's a completely different um, formula, I suppose, to the traditional music shop where people can walk in and, and try and, and hold the book and, you know, go to the piano. When they buy on the internet, they don't have that. So I do try to make it as easy as, as it can be because mm, it's, it's like a scans, scans and the, 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 the demo tracks. Demo tracks. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so it's like a virtual music shop, really. Mm. Do you do downloads? Yes, I do. I have digital downloads. Um, um, it's a large catalog there as well. So um, right. people can buy uh, digital downloads um, either of single tunes 
or, or books. Okay, because um, I know that for people in Australia and in the States who are listening, uh, you know, <laughs> transport costs can be huge. Uh, so actually, it's a good, good option actually, to have. Speaking of costs, I have a I have a good friend, a piano teacher in Alabama, Alabama, Rick, um, Rick Roberts, and he says that it actually is cheaper to order books from me than to drive to his music shop in Alabama. And buy the same book there? But buy books because it's, he says the nearest to him is quite far away. So he says what he spends on petrol is actually... <laughs> right. To buy that, so yeah, it's it's one can one can argue about the costs, but yep. I think the costs aren't that much. And I know that people reported that my books would arrive to the states, for example, within like up to six days. So it's not too bad because I know I checked some American postal services do exactly the same within the United States. And imagine how far the books travel from me. So I'm kind That's of true. saying. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least go to Eleanor's site and check out her music because it is, well, I, I was I can't wait to try out some of your um, some of the teen stuff because that's that's the group that I teach well, almost uh, exclusively now and it looks really cool. Yeah, yeah I saw yeah, that I one. Saying, I'm very proud. I like I love beautiful things and I like quality things. So that's what I kind of you know my my publishing company is all about new because it's very new. The names. Uh, maybe not as new, but I'm new <laughs> to that, you know, in comparison to some very, very old houses, um, publishing houses. But as I said, you know, my message is that, you know, modern music needs to be heard today and needs to be played today by students of today. Yep. Well, look, thank you so much. Uh, it's been wonderful to meet you finally and thank see you. and hear all the stuff you're doing. I'm going to dig into your music and I hope others who are listening get inspired to check out your site. So it's Eleanor, E-L-A-N-A-C-O-B-B, elenacobb.com. Yeah. .com. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I would encourage you to jump on there, have a look, particularly if you're the classically trained musician who would like some jazzy tunes and some approach to jazz teaching. I think um, Ella can, Elena can definitely help you there. Um, and I'll look forward to hopefully seeing you maybe next year sometime. My, uh, my, yeah, my, my, my family heritage is actually English, so I've got a lot of relatives over there. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Um, any, any other final things to mention before we sign off? Um, I don't know. I just I just mentioned uh, that the composer's name maybe somebody want to know. So I have uh, fantastic books by Heather Hammond, Ollie Wedgwood, Sam Wedgwood, Melanie Spanswick, um, Jenny Walker, Donald Thompson, Barbara Ahrens. I'm trying not to to uh, forget somebody. Um, <laughs> Alice yeah. Matthews. Now you've done it because now you're gonna now you're gonna forget someone. <laughs> I know I a of, will. A lot of these people. Um, uh, if somebody, I, I'm I'm really really sorry. And Paul Paul Birchall, there you go. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, so I, I a lot of these people will be known to people who hang out online as well because, for example, yeah. Melanie Spanswick's got a great blog, and uh, I know a lot of those okay. names I recognise. So I'm sure others will too. Yeah. That's great. All right, Eleanor, we better sign off. I'll let you get on with your other things today. Thank you so much for spending time with me on the podcast today. Thank you so very, very much. And I'm really looking forward, I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to meeting you because that would be amazing. London be is my favourite place. Music Expo is a fantastic place to come. Brilliant. We can have a jam session. I think it would be good fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All Thank right, then. <laughs> See you later. Okay, bye. Bye. If the idea of a piano teacher's community where you get to access the best educational resources, rub shoulders with expert teachers from around the world and have immediate access to feedback for any of your questions, then Inner Circle membership is for you. The Inner Circle is my private community of piano teachers from across the globe who share a commitment to creating and delivering the most inspiring, modern and progressive learning experiences for their students. Membership is now open, so head to timtopham.com forward slash community to find out more and get involved today. I can't wait to see you on the inside.